time now for the Sunday Talk. Tonight, the politics of ethical eating. This week, restaurant chain Earl's announced it would only be serving certified humane beef from now on. The catch? Alberta beef is out and Kansas beef is in. The move is part of an increasingly hot debate about all kinds of ethically sourced food. When most people think about farming, they're imagining animals on grass, sunshine, a farmer who is quite knowledgeable about different farming techniques and knows his animals as individuals. That all changed 50 years ago with the rise of factory farming. Animals packed in close together, pumped with antibiotics from birth till death, exposed by undercover activists. This was the worst abuse I've ever seen inflicted on an animal. Concerns now for not just animal rights, but human rights. Thailand's government says it's not ignoring the prevalence of slavery in the shrimp industry. Consumers are now paying real attention. Burger King says it will now source its pork and chicken only from places that raises them cage-free. Demand for ethically sourced animal products is rising and companies are responding. Our bacon now comes from pork raised without the use of antibiotics. I like that. Fantastic. The latest? Earl's will be the first restaurant chain in North America to serve certified humane beef in all of its restaurants. Earl says there's not enough of Alberta's famous beef to meet their new standard. So it went south. Alberta farmers and politicians are furious. I've personally made a choice that I'm not going to eat at Earl's. To insinuate that what we're doing now is not humane is, uh, that's, that's ir irreprehensible in my mind. I'm joined by our panelists. Jonathan Kay is editor-in-chief at Walrus Magazine. Supriya Devetti is a government relations consultant and commentator. And Janet Brown is a pollster and political commentator from Calgary. And that's where she is tonight. So, Janet, welcome. Thank you. Um, what to start with you. And just, you wrote a column this week about the Earl's decision saying that this has nothing to do with public health, that it's a calculated marketing strategy. You basically argue that traditional Albertans are being left in the dust here. What, what did you mean? Well, Earl's is a chain that was originally established in Alberta. And you have a lot of people who are very loyal to the Earl's chain and have been for, for quite some time. And these people are also quite loyal to Alberta and Alberta brands and Alberta um, products. So, so when you tell them that Alberta products are no longer good enough for their restaurant, it's really set people in a tizzy in this city. It really makes them feel that they're being betrayed by a company who they have been loyal customers of for many years. So is it seen as responding to a fad? Like is there, 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 there instead of an ethical issue? Yes, I think it very much is seen that way here in Alberta. Um, people here believe in Alberta beef. Um, over the years, the standards have changed. Um, you know, Alberta beef is a very high quality product. Um, and when Earl says there's not enough beef that matches their criteria, there's not enough beef that's been certified um, humane registered trademark. There's certainly enough beef out there that would meet the standards of certified humane, but it's, there's not enough farmers who've joined up to this particular program and paid money to have their beef certified So humane. I don't want to spend the whole uh, evening talking about Earl's because it really is just part of, of a movement, but John, what was your sense watching this this week? Is this an ethical decision or just a fad, a PR fad. Well, I think the basis of it is ethical. There are a lot of people who want to eat uh, meat that's essentially torture-free. I would argue that it's even more important in regard to pigs and chickens, which typically are, are treated much worse than cows. Uh, so at the basis, there is a completely legitimate uh, ethical uh, phenomenon here. How it's being treated here, you could argue that maybe this is, there's something about marketing, but you could also argue that Alberta farmers should have gotten ahead of this because so many people care about this. Why didn't they get the designation, even if it is expensive? What was your sense, Supriya? Yeah, I more or less agree with John here, but I think ultimately when people are talking about what, you know, whether or not they want to eat eth ethical food, I, I liken it a little bit to claiming that uh, your favorite movie is Citizen Kane, but in reality it's like, dude, where's my car? Nobody <laughs> wants to seem jerky and say that they don't want to eat ethically sourced meat. Um, I, I, I do think Earl's is, is reacting to a, a, a PR fad, and I, I agree with Janet that it is right now a, a calculated strategy that, that, that they're using, but I think ultimately... I, I, there is a certain sense that that is where the tide is going, so you have to wonder why, why they didn't get ahead of the curve here. 
So is there a sense then, Janet, that this is just targeting, I guess, wealthy consumers? Well, certainly the more money you have, then the more choices you have when it comes to your food consumption. And so a lot of people are looking to spend their money in a way that makes them feel better about what they're getting for the product. So um, certainly the more money you have, that you can justify spending that extra dollar on an organic avocado. You can justify uh, spending a little extra on a, on a product that's certified a certain way. But at the end of the day, are these products really any healthier or any better for the consumers or is just slapping a label on them, giving people the sense that, you know, they can feel like they're doing something ethical, they can feel like they're doing something healthy, but maybe they're not doing anything that's any better than, you know, buying the basic stuff in the grocery store. Yeah. I, I guess I would push back against the idea that it's a fad or that this is just part of, of consumer vanity because some of the leaders in this field in terms of buying products that are sourced ethically in terms of avoiding torturing animals uh, have been McDonald's and Walmart. Uh, neither of which is associated with snobbery in the consumer field. Uh, McDonald's is moving toward not buying any of its pork from, uh, from uh, producers that use breeding uh, crates that confine the animal in an inhumane way. Uh, Walmart is not buying any eggs from uh, producers that use battery cages that keep uh, chickens in a, in a very confined way. Uh, these are not high-end uh, stores, and the fact that even uh, mass market retailers like McDonald's and Walmart are moving in this direction shows that this fad has, I don't want to call it a fad, that this trend has been going on for a long time and even ordinary middle class consumers want to make sure that animals aren't being tortured so that they can get food on the table. I think that, um, you know, trying to do better for your family and trying to buy better food for your family is not at all a trend. What's a trend here is putting these labels on things. Just because a handbag has a fancy French label on it doesn't necessarily mean it's better than another handbag. And I think that's what's the fad here, is that these, these names, these names that we're asserting to things that are brand names and people are, are being led to believe that there's something more to the brand name, that, that, that certified beef is somehow better than uncertified beef. If, if, uh, that, that's sorry, a, no, but that, that's a key point, though, is, is that when you get to the actual labeling itself, it ends up being somewhat Kafka-esque, and that there are a lot of loopholes to jump through, and depending on where you are, the, 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 the branding will, I guess, be different than the meat. So Janet has a point there, no? Uh, Janet does have a point in terms of the alphabet soup of designations, and, and this is a point that, that even advocates of animal welfare have made, is that it's very confusing for the consumers. I would probably argue that the best thing that producers could do is actually open their doors and make it easier for the media and for ordinary consumers to actually see how animals are treated. Unfortunately, these days, uh, it's usually only clandestine videos that we, by which we get to see how animals are actually treated. In and, some of these places, and, yeah. And, yeah and, and often these videos show practices which are very much at variance with humane farming methods. So perhaps if we had more exposure, uh, more information about how these animals were treated, uh, we wouldn't have to rely on the alphabet soup of acronyms that we're discussing. And we're talking a lot right now about the actual treatment of the animals, but you know, there's also the, the issue of growth hormones and, and superfluous antibiotics that are being used in, in meat that, I, that Earl's is also making a point of saying that, that it wants to distance itself away from, which and, you know, that's where you can actually lead to things like communicable diseases and, and such like that. So you're, you are, in fact, affecting your health if, if you are moving that's away true, from That's true, although I would argue that more and more consumers, it's not just about their health, they're actually interested in the amount of pain that animals endure. So I think that's actually a growth industry for high-end uh, meat consumption. Fair. Janet, what do you think of the argument that Alberta ranchers may have kind of dropped the ball on this, that they weren't able to supply enough of the antibiotic-free, uh, humanely slaughtered cattle? Well, you know, it, there's a lot of parallels between the beef industry and the oil industry. Albertans see that we're making a lot of progress, that change has been made, that, you know, that, that we can be proud of these two products. But the rest of the world is always sort of bashing us for not being good enough. Um, I think Alberta beef producers have come a long way in terms of how animals are treated, how they're slaughtered, um, you know, how health issues like uh, antibiotics and steroids are treated. I think we've come a long way. Where the industry's fallen down is on the marketing side of things. Um, they just sort of are assuming that people will see enough value in the Alberta beef brand. But I think actually they needed to do better marketing to get people to understand exactly what the standards in Canada are and, and the fact that consumers can be very comfortable with beef that's produced in Canada, regardless of what label it, it carries. So do people actually want this, Supriya? Speaking of marketing, has Earl's made the right decision? Like, How many people are, are withdrawn on this issue? 
I think a fair bit of people are, and I think a, a, more people like to say that they are. Uh, I think ultimately you go to a chain restaurant, whether it be McDonald's or a higher end one like Earl's, because you're going there for predictability. You know what you're going to get. Uh, I don't know if it's going to get them any new clientele. Uh, it's certainly they're getting a whole bunch of pushback in, in Alberta. I don't know if that's going to extend to other Earl's locations. But I, I think, yeah, I, I think John does have a point that, that increasingly we're becoming aware of what we put into our bodies uh, and whether or not that's it, with antibiotics or it goes to uh, having your, your meat treated humanely. I, I do think people tend to are going that way. And it's one of the reasons a lot of people become vegetarians. Uh, Earl's has an interest in people not being vegetarian. And uh, once people make that decision, they don't want to eat cruelly raised uh, chickens or, or pigs or, or cows, often they won't eat meat for the rest of their lives. So there is a vested interest here in the entire ranching community in making sure that people have confidence that these animals are being treated properly. So there must be some Albertans who are happy with the decision, Janet. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I didn't stop by in Earl's this weekend, but after I wrote the uh, blog post for CBC, I got lots of response on social media, and people were telling me that there were 20-minute lineups at Earl's this weekend. So, you know, I think when companies make marketing decisions like this, they are very calculated. And I think somebody at, um, at Earl's ran the numbers, and they thought, you know, for every loyal Alberta brief person we lose over this, we're going to gain three or four, you know, social do-gooders in Vancouver. So uh, let's let those... <laughs> Those, let's let those uh, Calgarians go. Well, I noticed on the menu there's still there's shrimp on Earl's menu still, and they don't right. talk about monitoring their shrimp. Right, and that's a huge problem um, because you maybe know, not for Earl. No, we don't not, know not where necessarily. They get the yeah, exactly. But I mean, not having ethically sourced shrimp is actually you know it, it, analogous to, to endorsing slave labor in, in in Thailand. So for me, sustainable seafood and sustainable shrimp, especially, uh, would be on, on on the top of it. And if Earl's is going to go that way, then it would be you know helpful for them to have a, an, their entire menu be good and ethical and make you feel good about yourself, whether you're not from Vancouver or from your Toronto. <laughs> Quite a hot debate. Thank you so much. We'll see what happens in Alberta with Earls and elsewhere. Thanks so much, Janet, for being with us today. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.